We're at Madex 2025 in Busan, South Korea. We are now on the massive booth of HD Hyundai Heavy Industry, the leading shipbuilder here in South Korea. They have a lot going on, a lot of uh, new designs, new projects, and to find out all about them, I am meeting again with uh, Gabriel Kim. Gabriel, great to see you. Thank you for welcoming us. Uh, thank you very much for having us. Uh, I'm always good to see you. Uh, uh, I'm always very happy to see you, Xavier. Thank you very much again for your warm welcome. So we are standing in front of your uh, export vessels display. Uh, so with the number of uh, current and uh, future projects. So there are two frigates uh, there that are current projects. And uh, in the back, your brand new uh, HDF 6000 uh, project. What can you tell us about these three projects? So the ship in the front is the Miguel Marvar class frigate uh, that we're currently uh, working on with the Philippine Navy. So we've delivered the first ship, BRP Miguel Marvar, uh, to Philippine Navy with their satisfaction. And also we will be delivering the second ship of its class uh, by the end of this year. Uh, I think uh, from what I heard, the Philippine Navy is very satisfied with the outcome of the ship. And uh, uh, based on this design, we also uh, were able to sign the contract with the Peruvian Navy for the Peruvian Navy uh, local construction project. So based on our design, uh, we, will, we are building the frigate at CIMA, which is the local Peruvian Navy operated shipyard. So, and behind it, uh, that's a very impressive vessel. It's new, you're unveiling it at, uh, here at uh, Madex 2025. It's the HGF uh, 6000, very big frigate, 6,500 tons, uh, advanced uh, sensor suites, a lot of weapon system. T tell us about this new ship. So, um, this HDF 6000 platform is geared toward navies, which uh, require high-end frigates. So, as you can see, uh, the HDF 6000 is the accumulation of our state-of-the-art naval ship technology. We've accumulated all the experiences we uh, learned through ROK Navy projects, Philippine Navy projects, and Peruvian projects. And we've made the ship so that it uh, has up-to-date uh, naval technology and has the most uh, accommodating platform for the crew members. And also, she's equipped with uh, higher-end capabilities such as ballistic missile defense and deep strike capability. Navies which require these higher-end capabilities can uh, perform these capabilities with just a frigate platform, not a destroyer. You mentioned uh, you use your experience from uh, ROC Navy projects. Are you applying your know-how from the KDDX uh, current destroyer project for this uh, design? Yes, um, so uh, this HDF 6000 was actually uh, developed based on our KDX 2 class destroyer. Uh, based on its hull form, uh, under waterline, but on top of the waterline, we've put in much of the lessons we learned through KDDX basic design, and we've accumulated these technologies to the frigate. However, uh, we've, uh, we're, we're also uh, integrating a lot of uh, international uh, weapons and sensor suites uh, for uh, instead of uh, domestic solutions, so that uh, end users which are which prefer either European. Uh, or um, whichever uh, solutions, they can use this platform to uh, build the frigate they want. Gabriel, this is your display of uh, concept vessels. Uh, so can you tell us what you are showcasing here? Uh, and so this is our latest HCX series called HCX 25 and it incorporates all the design features that we think uh, a naval ship in the future, uh, maybe in 10 or 20 years, will possess. Uh, the most interesting thing about this uh, particular platform is the 
uh, AI-based uh, naval cockpit. So uh, unlike the conventional bridge where there are many officers operating in the bridge, our research house designed owned uh, AI-based uh, naval cockpit so that uh, only two uh, officers are required for navigation of the ship. Also, uh, the ship will have many AI features uh, which will uh, show all the obstacles in the way. Just like the driving assistant technology these days, uh, like a, a autonomous uh, driving, uh, we developed a similar uh, AI technology, AI software, which enables assist, uh, assistance in navigation. This vessel uh, will integrate a lot of uh, drones. Uh, I see there's a dedicated uh, drone deck, a midship. It can launch uh, USVs. On the sides, it can probably launch uh, loitering munitions. So this is very much for like next generation of warfare, but which is becoming current as we are seeing in the in the Black Sea and, uh, and Red Sea. Yes. Um, so uh, at HHI, we believe the future of the naval warfare will be heavily the changed to a drone-based warfare such as the UAV, USV and uh, so on. So we've incorporated many uh, drone related features to the ship such as uh, here we've placed uh, UAV launchers so they can be used as the remote sensors to the ship uh, providing the ship with many uh, useful information. Uh, in terms of combat and navigation. And also uh, here, uh, for counter, uh, this is laser-based anti-drone system, and there's one placed in the front of the ship and two in the astern, besides CVs. And, and these can be uh, used as an anti-drone system to uh, counter uh, enemies' drone uh, fleet. Um, here, uh, this is the enclosed naval gun. So we've tried, we tried to make this ship as, uh, as much as um, stealthy as possible. So as you can see, um, uh, in, in normal operations, the naval gun will be hidden and will be uh, uh, put out only when necessary. Behind it, you're showcasing uh, a larger ship it looks somewhat like an aircraft carrier, but it's for drones, for fixed-wing UAVs. Uh, we are unveiling uh, two drone carriers. Uh, one is the drone carrier for rotary wings. So for rotary wings, the platform doesn't have to be too big. And one in the middle is the rot uh, drone carrier for the fixed-wing uh, drones. So in the front deck, uh, there's two, as you can see, there's two airways in the uh, drone carrier. And one in the front is where we launch drones uh, based on the EMOS technology. In the back, there's an airway uh, with uh, three arresting gears to guide drones landing on the ship. And this ship is also uh, equipped with a multifunction radar and also VLS. So. Uh, if she's being attacked, the ship will automatically uh, counter that attack with their own, uh, with its own missile defense. Gabriel, the three big models in the back are conceptual and uh, show what the future could be. But the vessel in the front is actually the, the, the present or the very close future because you're under contract for this. Uh, so what is it exactly? So uh, we are performing the combat uh, augment surface vehicle uh, project. Uh, we are performing a concept design for the ROK Navy. Uh, this particular USV is about 150 tons so, and 38 meters. So it's a considerable size USV. Uh, and it's uh, planned to replace uh, fast attack crafts in the very front line. Uh, for the uh, navies, um, and it's completely uh, autonomous, so it's fully equipped with our company's own designed AI uh, mission autonomy system. This particular AUSV doesn't require an officer on deck. She will uh, navigate from the uh, port to the uh, front lines to perform its missions. And one particular interesting thing about this 
our vessel is she's equipped with four-sided MFR. So uh, she will provide latest up-to-date target information from the front line. And she comes in three variants. Uh, the service combatant variant, uh, underwater uh, combatant variant, and uh, anti-air variant. And this particular model is a surface combat variant, and she's equipped with uh, 130 uh, millimeter guided missiles. And uh, we hopefully we will be able to uh, deliver these vessels to the ROK Navy, and also for uh, navies uh, in uh, other regions as well. Last but certainly not least, HD Hyundai Atmatics 2025 is showcasing for the first time this uh, new OPV design that's for the ROC Navy. And this is the display of uh, ROC Navy programs that uh, HD Hyundai is currently involved in. So Gabriel, uh, this OPV is quite unusual because uh, it looks like it has advanced sensor suites and uh, weapon suites. You're correct. Uh, this is a concept model based on the studies we've performed with the ROK Navy. Um, she's the 1600-ton uh, OPV, but as you can see, uh, it's heavily armed with uh, a surface-to-surface -surface missile, vertical launching system, and also the integrated sensor mast. Uh, this is because, you know, uh, in the Korean Peninsula, uh, we're, we're still engaged with uh, our enemy, so uh, even our OPVs are very highly capable. And also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we also uh, integrated the naval cockpit to this uh, platform so that uh, she can have less crew members and more automation. Also, she's equipped with the hangar and the pad for uh, helipad for the unmanned helicopters. All right. Well, Gabriel, thank you very much for giving us an overview of your extensive, uh, you know, booth here at Madex 2025 and uh, introducing to us the many new ship designs that uh, you have been unveiling. Thank you very much. You did a really good job. Gazamida. Thank you very much.